planting seeds in the Garden State. Can Newark Mayor Ross Baraka's reign as mayor of Newark fertilize the campaign for governor? The point starts right now. Ross Baraka is the 40th mayor of the city of Newark. His family have lived in the city for more than 80 years, but now he wants to move to Trenton. Yeah. I should also point out that you're also a spoken word performer, but we're not going to ask you to perform. We're going to ask you tough questions about what New Jersey people are concerned yeah. about. Yeah. So you want to move to Trenton from Newark. So one of the biggest questions that people in New Jersey have is mass transit. This has been That's a right. summer of hell as they call it, for people right. who take NJ Transit. Right. Of almost 2,000 incidents just in two months this summer. Right. If you get elected governor, what are you going to do about it? Well, New Jersey Transit is a little dysfunctional right now. They're using their capital uh, funds for operational costs. Uh, they, New Jersey has not dedicated any funding uh, for New Jersey Transit, so that's part of the problem. They can't fix the long-term issues that they have because they have no capital funds. They're using it to run the place. And we're debating in New Jersey how it's going to be paid for, uh, whether it's going to be paid for by multi-state corporations or ratepayers, people who get up in the morning, working class folks, are going to raise their rates $15. But they already raised the 15%, fares. 15%. Yeah, they just already me. raised the fares on NJ Transit. How can right. you make the people who ride the, sub, the trains pay any more I, money? I, I agree with you. I think that uh, that is a failed idea, and then ultimately we need to continue with the corporate business tax to use that to pay for uh, operating of New Jersey Transit, uh, dedicate money to capital funds, and begin to do the fixes that, that needs to happen. You know, the irony here is that when you talk to uh, New York City Transit officials from the MTA, yeah. and, you know, there are complaints about what the MTA is doing with congestion pricing, they always point to New Jersey and <laughs> say... Guess what? They don't fund their mass transit the way we want to fund our mass transit. So I guess the question to you is, like, what's the best way? I mean, isn't there a long-term solution that needs to be worked out that would include some kind of dedicated revenue source? That's exactly right. And people would argue, oh, you just put it in the budget. Like, it's, that, it's, it's a simple way, but ultimately you have to find out who's going to pay for it all of the time. And I think we, in, in New Jersey, we have a corporate business tax. Uh, it was cut. Uh, but I think that we need to use that, reinstate that, and begin to use it to pay for our transit in New Jersey. We have incredible uh, transportation infrastructure in New Jersey. We have to invest in it. We haven't invested in it the way it needs to be in years. And so we have all these problems because we have not uh, really doubled down on our transit the way we needed to. So it would, if you did the corporate business tax, would that be a dedicated revenue source? Yes. One of the things I can tell you yes. is that in, in New York and the MTA, there are literally dozens of taxes that are dedicated to going directly to the MTA. For example, a quarter of 1% of the sales tax in New York City goes to the MTA. Right. The stock transfer tax, 1%, goes to the MTA. The mortgage retorting tax goes to the MTA. There's dozens of them like that. Right. Is that something that you think New Jersey should do in terms of funding New Jersey transit so that we don't have this problem every summer and every right. other summer? The, the thing about New Jersey is we've identified the funding source. People know, in fact, what it costs to run New Jersey Transit. That's exactly what the CBT tax uh, gives us, uh, you know, in the state. So using that to fund that would be the answer to this and continuing to do that without raiding the funds to do other things, but to focus in on that and, and don't spend it on anything else but transit. Yeah, but see, that's the rub. Everybody tries to raid those funds right. and use it for other things. We have to be disciplined. Uh, and, and understand that our infrastructure, our transportation infrastructure is important. That's why business come to our state. They come because of the transportation infrastructure, because of the port, the seaport, the airport, yeah, because of, uh, you know, the all of the roads that we have that get, get you up and down a corridor very quickly. So uh, that's why we need to invest in it. The train, the rail, all of that is incredibly important for us, and we have to continue to invest in it. So while we're on the topic of transportation, you know, the biggest thing in New York City right now is the... Uh, congestion pricing tax, which has right. been temporarily paused, but who knows what's going to happen later on. So if Governor Hochul unpauses it and you are the governor of the state of New Jersey, what would your response be? I mean, would you try to, 
lure businesses to New Jersey? Would you would you try to find things for people to do in New Jersey as work-wise so they wouldn't have to come into the city? How would you deal with it? Well, I think we need to do that anyway, whether it's, yeah, there's a uh, congestion tax anyway. We need to uh, make New Jersey a destination uh, all of the time. That's something that we need to work on uh, regardless of that. Uh, but I would sit with the governor. Obviously, you need to. I think that should have happened prior to this uh, because it causes a problem for folks in New Jersey who do not have uh, transit, uh, do not have a way out of there except the car. So it's, it's almost putting a specific tax on those guys in Bergen County specifically, Fort Lee, places up there who uh, are going to have a difficult time uh, with this cost. Uh, I agree with the idea of cutting down congestion. It helps us. It helps us in terms of the environment. Uh, those things are laudable goals uh, that we need to be trying to reach. But I think there's a way to do this uh, without hurting each other. And two governors should figure out a way to make this happen without making it a political mess or a political football. So are you saying that you don't think there was enough coordination between absolutely not. New York and New Jersey before this thing happened? Yes, absolutely not. I don't think there's enough coordination between any of the agencies, MTA with New Jersey Transit. We just talk at each other, not to each other. I think the governors should really talk about bringing our agencies together and figuring out how to talk about transportation in a regional way, not just this New York thing, New Jersey thing. We get angry, you get angry, uh, because the goals are laudable. These are not, I don't think they're unnecessary. Congestion is a real issue. Uh, the environmental concerns are very real issues. But so is the rising costs of living uh, uh, in, in, in this region and in, in New Jersey. And the folks that live in the northern part of New Jersey have to pay an extra tax almost uh, to get to work and to go back and forth. It's, and you it's said problematic. that's not fair. No, it's not, it's not fair for, for them. Obviously, we have to figure out a way uh, to, to address that. So I'd like to change topics, believe it or not. Yeah. One of the things that... Uh, people in New York are concerned about, and I guess in Jersey, especially in schools, is cell phones in schools. I wonder what your position is on banning cell phones in schools throughout the state. No, I, I, I don't agree with that. I think people should have access to, to phones. I think there should be some rules and policies that regulate that. Uh, but I, I do understand, uh, you know, you have kids with pa who need to get contact their parents. If something happens, they need to contact their parents. In this environment, with all the craziness that's going on, parents would be completely uneasy uh, if children didn't have access to, or opportunity to reach out to them or call them. I was a principal, by the way, so I do know the disruption that that can cause in schools. So how would you deal with the disruption? I mean, kids are always looking at their phones. I mean, I have two kids. They're always looking at their phones, even when we have dinner. Right. So, I mean, the best way to get them to stop looking at their phones is to begin to use their phones in, the, in instruction. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh, what a novel concept. <laughs> right, so you, we begin to uh, figure out a way how to use the technology and, 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 and use that as a part of instruction. Uh, you know, ultimately... Yeah, that's an idea a, we haven't heard. Right, well, that's, I think that those are the things that we have to begin to do uh, in schools. But also, there's also ways and devices and things that you, you can use to make this, the cell phone, uh, uh, you know, not work during certain times or certain periods. But, but ultimately... I don't think the answer, whatever we come up with, I don't think the answer is disposing of the phone altogether. I think these kids need access to phones. Uh, and, and especially since we haven't figured out proper child care. We haven't made child care uh, uh, affordable, um, accessible. Uh, after school time, people, kids need access to their phones. They need, they're walking home by themselves. Uh, they're trying to get in. Parents are at work. They need access to those phones. So Newark has been praised for how you've dealt with the homeless problem. And one of the things that you've done is you've used um, old packing, um, I guess, crates. Containers. And containers. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you've retrofitted them right. to turn them into lovely homes. Right. So is that an idea that you think is translatable around the state that would help with the homeless problem in other cities in addition to Newark? Absolutely. I, I think, you know, people are using tiny homes, all kind of things around the country. So it's not like a novel idea. I mean, we some use of these containers. Have two, they have two bedrooms. I mean, they're right. not. Right. We use containers because we're in a port. Port City. We have access to containers, uh, container companies. We use containers. Uh, they're, they're affordable. They're, they're cheap uh, in comparison to, you know, what it costs to build. Uh, you know, we can build them in a relatively short period of time. They're not expensive? It, no, it's, it's not, not, not in comparison to what it would cost you to build from the ground or, or retrofit something else. Absolutely not. Is there land to put them in? Is there what? Is there land? Oh, yeah. I mean, you have to identify. We've identified... Uh, two pieces of property that the city owns, and we, we've put two uh, villages there, 
uh, that we call them villages, and there's a third one called Resilient Hope that we're in the process of building now. We'll have to leave it right there for now, but we'll be right back. We're back with Newark Mayor Ross Baraka. I want to ask you about some like sort of an, an anomaly in, in New Jersey politics. They've never elected a Democrat or a Republican when the person of that party, in this case Phil Murphy, has served two terms. Are you at all worried about that, that New Jersey is going to suddenly make a move to be red because we've had two terms with Phil Murphy? You know, the strange thing about that is that New Jersey actually has a million more Democrats registered than, than Republicans. But they're, Repu yeah. they're Republican governors all the time. Right. And, and what's interesting is the Democratic governors usually only win one term. <laughs> and then the second term, you know, uh, goes to Republicans and they get two and then we get one. That's usually how it's been going. So Phil Murphy, Murphy broke was the, the record. first one. He broke the record. First governor, Democratic governor in 30 years to, to be able to do that. So you and want to barely, break the record and he again? Barely, yeah, this is a whole other record that we want to break. So let me ask you about this. Um, one of the things you talk about is the racial uh, racial wealth gap. Yeah. And you talk yeah. about reparations. Tell me your thoughts about that. Well, you know, the racial wealth gap in New Jersey is pretty prominent. Um, you know, uh, average, uh, what a median wealth for white families is over $300,000. For African-American families, about 17000 Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, it is uh, tremendous. It's huge. It would take hundreds of years to resolve. Uh, at the base of that is home is home ownership, right? And trying to figure out how to create home ownership. And the reason why reparations is, is, a, is a real discussion in New Jersey is because folks aren't even allowed to say the word. So they say, oh, we could talk about the wealth gap, but you can't say the word reparations because we just it, doesn't, said it. it doesn't right. In New Jersey, you probably get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's uh, you know uh, you know because I, I guess it doesn't poll well. But I I don't think that's a reason for us not to have these discussions. And I think statewide. We need to be talking about what this means, what it means for the economy, what it means for uh, racial justice, uh, because I think, you know, people look at social justice as separate from economic growth, uh, that you have to have one or the other, but both. I think you bring more people, include more people into the economy, that the economy grows that way. Uh, there are a lot of people excluded from the economy. This is what, you know, uh, in the presidential side, what uh, Vice President Harris is talking about, an opportunity economy. How do you create an economy that gives more people an opportunity? People that have been locked out for decades, centuries even, and I think the African Americans in this country have been locked out. Uh, very identifiable policy, uh, you know, ways that, and deliberate ways that, that have been done. So we're talking about how to undo that, right? So is one way to undo it making housing more accessible by giving people tax credits to buy housing or um, just grants to buy housing, how would you... That, that is one how, way. How do you want to... What are your ideas about how you could you could change the wealth gap? So, so I mean, housing is one way. I mean, uh, you know, after World War II, you know, they, we began to, in the country, give people low interest or no interest loans to move into the suburbs. That is how the middle class was created in many communities around the country. Can you around do that housing. in New Jersey? It, it's possible. I think we have to have the discussions but about. That's not the only thing that, that would. No, change it's not. It. It's not the only thing. Earned earn, earn income tax credits, expanding earned income tax credits, expanding child tax credits, uh, providing opportunities for people in Newark. We did a guaranteed income. What would that look like on a state and a federal level? What did, what would guaranteed income look like for folks who need it the most, right? Uh, and I would look at it the same way this administration federally looks at. The 40-40, like making sure that 40% of all of the resources or the grants go into neighborhoods that have been economically distressed or historically left out. Uh, we begin to look at uh, strategies that begin to put resources in communities that have historically been denied those resources and opportunities. Uh, I think that people look at this, they look at uh, it in a very myopic way and don't look at it in a whole, as a holistic way. Uh, or they look at it as a way to exclude people from one thing versus the other. But also something that could grow the economy right. in New Jersey. This is a way to grow the economy, help the economy grow. I think right now we've been thinking about in New Jersey, how do we bring people into our state? How do we bring businesses into a state? As opposed to how do we invest in things that we already have? People that are already there, businesses that are already in our community. But and we do both. 
but I think we lean in on what we have access to. But doesn't that require some new taxes of some kind, whether it's corporate taxes or sure. tax the rich or mansion taxes, all kinds of ways that you could do it to raise it, it, money? It absolutely does. Or get the federal government to do it? It absolutely Well, that would be great, but, but yeah, it does. And, you know, what's interesting is that the state cut many of those taxes. These are not taxes that that are brand new, these are taxes that existed at some point and were, and was cut. You're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars, even billions of dollars removed from the budget to give tax breaks to the wealthy because the fear is if you tax the wealthy, they're going to leave the state. But that has, never, that has not happened, right? So, uh, the so point, you think you could do some more taxes on, on people who have large incomes? Sure. On, on, on the, the sale even of real estate above $1 million, $3 million. You know, the cost of housing in New Jersey and in this area is increasing tremendously. You can uh, tax uh, real estate sales. You can do all of these things that have existed before. It's not something that I'm making up. What I'm saying is that this stuff should come back and we should think about it. So you're right. really talking about a complete tax overhaul or looking at a complete tax overhaul in New Jersey to look at all the kinds of ways you can raise money. What are the good ways and what are the bad ways? That's right. And and, and making sure our taxes are not regressive and, and, and punitive and make sure working families and people are not paying uh, more income taxes or taxes, period, than the most wealthy in our state. And when that happens, it's uneven, it's unbalanced. So do you think there also has to be reform of the estate tax? Absolutely. It has to be reform of the estate tax. Like, what would you like to see happen? I mean, right right now, I mean, we, we, sh we need to separate out. Uh, what that is, because I think it's too long and too wide, uh, that we, uh, you know, begin to put it in portions, like some, below a million dollars, above that, and then folks who are receiving stuff from their state, we don't we don't tax any of that. For example, we have a gas tax in New Jersey, right? Yes, They've raised do. the gas tax, right? But, but we don't, nobody wants you to raise the gas right, tax. Right, but I don't oh want to do God, it either. Oh, my God, it's a third rail in New Jersey. Right, that's, that's what they do. They raise the gas tax. They cut... Sales tax, but raise the gas tax, right? So what would you do? Well, I would, I would leave it. I don't think we need to be raising the gas tax. I mean, at the end of the day, we raise gas tax, but we don't raise taxes. I mean, there's no luxury tax for people who, who, who are in limousines or people who take it. We're not taxing the fuel on people in private jets, right? So we need to think about these and things. You have a lot of people who take private jets in New Jersey. <laughs> You could de you could definitely make money from that. We surely we cer we certainly can. But I think the the idea is that we have to look at this stuff in an equitable way. And do an a, across way. the board right. reform, not just like right. piecemeal. Right. We have to look at it in an equitable way. We have to do serious tax reform. We have to do budget reform too. By the way, to look Are at. Are you spending things. too much money in New Jersey? Uh, no, I think the cost of living is increasing. Uh, you know, uh, inflationary issues that that are attached to that. Uh, we might be spending money in areas that I don't want to spend money in, or we can spend more money in one area as opposed to the other. But, uh, you know, this whole idea of we're spending too much, uh, I, I don't, I don't like, that notion to me is like, oh, we, want, we don't want big government. But I want government to be big enough to include everybody. But you want to have wise spending. Wise, smart spending. Look, we just learned today that our, our rating, our bond rating increased in Newark. It went up twice since I was the mayor. So... We, there's possible to have and. I think we have this or mentality, like you have to do this or that. I think it's possible to have a fiscally responsible government, but spend money in the areas where we need to spend. That's called investment, right? You invest your money in areas where you get more return on that investment. We're not getting return on investment. And I think people complain because the government spends a lot of money, but they don't see the return of that. So we have about 30 seconds left. If you got elected, what would be the very first thing you do when you got to Trenton? Uh, reform the taxes, <laughs> do something about our budget, uh, and begin to p put a plan in place around developing housing across the state of New Jersey. And transit. <laughs> housing and transit goes together. Okay. We're going to have to leave it right there for now, but our conversation continues right after the show on our streaming channel, CBS News New York. Thank you for joining me. Parental stress, New Yorkers are hoping the government can help relieve it. They're weighing in on your point. A new study says that parents are more stressed out than other adults. Do you think that's true or not true? Yes. No, not at all. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, of course. Oh, absolutely true. Oh, I definitely think it's true. Yeah, probably. <laughs> true. Why? 
because of the pressures of being of making a living, providing for their children. Did you just read the uh, op-ed by Vivek Matt, the Surgeon General in the New York Times? Um, it's really hard. I just dropped my daughter off from school, actually, for her first day. I feel like there's so many different balls in the air when you're a parent, and you don't know it until you're a parent. Yeah. Of course. You got more to worry about. I mean, I'm a parent and I'm stressed, but I'm sure there's lots of reasons for other people to be stressed too. So you're not more stressed out than other people? I have no idea. As a parent myself, I wasn't stressed out. My kid isn't my kid. She's going to be well. So I'm you're not good. more stressed out than other people? Not at all. What do you think would help more, um, child tax credits or universal child care? I don't think it's an either or. I, I really think we need both. Child trust tax credits. Universal child care. I think one of the biggest things that we can do for the economy is to provide affordable child care so that people can get back in the workforce. God, they would both help. <laughs> We're the uh, number one country in the world, right? Like, uh, we, should, we should be able to offer these things. I think child tax credits are more likely to be supported by Congress, and I think universal child care is kind of a non-starter. Do you think the United States will ever, ever provide universal child care for parents? Oh, I really hope so. I really do. I think so many parents are struggling. Uh, yes, but I don't know how long it will take. Someone has to pay for it. So who's going to pay for it? Not in this moment. So, uh, you know, we're all looking for ways for politicians to see how much more we have in common than what divides us. But I'm not holding out a lot of hope for universal child care. How do you think society needs to change in order to help parents? More support for stuff like child care. I think the workplace needs to be more acknowledging of it. Until you're a parent, you don't fully appreciate just how much effort goes into taking care of children. And uh, I think society, you know, people need to be empathetic towards that. In America, we should, like, you know, support the people who have children because the children are our future.